Hi folks, this is the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. I'm Christoph, today with me is Veer, and we're going to model a vehicle with a continuously variable transmission. So Veer, stage is yours. Yeah, hi Christoph. So if you go through our uh, MATLAB answers, you can find that we are getting a lot of queries regarding continuous variable transmission, like first one, this one, then the second is how to design a Baja transmission system. And even the last one, can I get the CVT Simulink model for that? So based on these feedback and uh, for the for the students those who are using it like uh, the participants of baja competition so we have come up with a model so in this one you can uh, see that when we are changing the throttle or the brake input the vehicle uh, velocity and the rpm of the engine is changing perfect so what i'm learning and this is actually great um this is a simulation model for Baja teams that want to model their yep. vehicle with a continuous variable transmission. And I think all yep. of them, including me, um, all of us, we are super curious to see what, what we are going to see in this video. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so this will be our agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be talking about the components of Baja ATV. Uh, then we'll, under vehicle modeling, we'll be seeing uh, how to define the gear ratio, then uh, when we change the parameters, like means what is the effect of the para uh, uh, varying the parameters? Right. This sounds to me like then, being early stage design. So if a Bacher team just starts, these are the, exactly the points they want to know, right? Yeah, cool. exactly. Nice. exactly. Nice. Then we'll incorporate CVT data into the model cool. and finally the key takeaway. So let's get started. Yep. So yeah, so just to means uh, inform the students mm -hmm. that, uh, so this is a bit kind of advanced model so uh, we'll highly encourage all of you to go through the physical modeling tutorial so this is the link which is uh, which is also provided in the description right yeah i 100% I agree with that i've seen the model and worked with weir on that so it goes into the details of stuff um, and if you have never worked with simscape before it's it's definitely recommended to go through the training because you'll be a lot more effective when you work on your project so yeah so let's move to the components of Baha ATV. So first of all, we would like to thank uh, Team Synergy from GL Bajaj Institute of Management and Technology. They have given uh, us the images and even the vehicle specifications of the, of the, of their Baha vehicles. Nice. So what all and, we are seeing uh, is pretty much realistic data, right? Yeah. That's yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have these components, vehicle body, suspension, tire, engine, and CVT. Mm -hmm. So let's see how means how uh, by uh, assembling these uh, uh, components we have uh, built the model. Mm -hmm. So this is the Baja ATV model, okay, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, we have various components like um, engine, then we have CVT block, and then the, then we have the vehicle body. So let's try to run the run the simulation and see what results we are getting. So we have we are giving input as uh, uh, brake input we are giving zero mm -hmm. and the throttle input is from 0 0.3 to uh, one after 20 seconds right. quick question we so the the teams our viewers could basically do anything they could feed any data in the model right yeah yeah i mean yeah cool perfect so, so as you can see the result that uh, when we are increasing the throttle mm -hmm. the velocity is increasing and after a certain time so it is reaching the maximum velocity i see so now uh, the big question is like how to model different components. Mm -hmm. So for example, like uh, the engine block. So if you double click on the generic engine, you can see that it's, uh, it asks for a uh, few values like speed vector and the torque vector. Mm -hmm. So now the question is from where we can get this data. Mm -hmm. so for example, if you have a, a data in the form of a image, mm -hmm. so how to extract those data points? So the one which we are showing is, it's kind of typical behavior of the engine, of the Baja engine. So similarly, if you have something like that, so this procedure will help you to get the data points. All right. So you can use one of the file actions called Grabit. Mm -hmm. So using Grabit, you can extract these points, uh, extract the data points. Okay. And then these uh, data points, you can feed in the generic engine. That's cool. That's cool because typically yeah. people will have data sheets of their components. And this is a very cool yep. approach how to get it from from yeah image data sheet into your into your model great yeah sure now even in the model you can see that we have uh, 
we have it uh, we have the link for visualization of the data so this nice. is the data which we are feeding in the generic Perfect. engine Perfect. now next uh, component is the cvt mm -hmm. that is continuously variable transmission so mm -hmm. just uh, just uh, to give you a brief overview uh, so it consists of uh, primary pulley variator secondary pulley and belt mm -hmm. so the variator which is connected to the primary pulley when it goes outward the variator of the secondary pulley will move inwards mm -hmm. such that the radius of the secondary pulley will be more than the radius of the primary pulley. Mm -hmm. So that will lead to speed reduction. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, when you uh, when the uh, variator of the primary pulley move inward, mm -hmm. the variator of the secondary pulley will move outward and it will lead to overdrive. Right. So now if we have to model that, model this uh, in the in Simscape, mm -hmm. so let's see what we have to do. Right. So this is the CVT block mm -hmm. we have made. And if you go inside this, you can see that we have a input shaft inertia, then we have mm -hmm. output shaft inertia, which is representing the primary and the secondary pulley. Mm -hmm. And to specify the uh, gear ratio, we have this variable gear ratio block. Okay, and just, just to make uh, sure we, we are on the same page. So the two blocks at the bottom are just sensors, right? What, what are they giving us? Yeah, they are just sensors. There's no physical meaning for mm -hmm. that. So we are they are giving us the RPM of the primary and the secondary. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So now we have explored the CVT mm -hmm. block and to connect the engine and the CVT, we need some speed reduction. So that's why we are using the simple gear ratio. I see. Okay. That has nothing yeah. to do with the CVT. That's just a mechanical system, like some gears yes. that teams need to set a certain gear ratio, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just to give a note on that, mm -hmm. to how to select the gear ratio for the simple gear. So if you can see that uh, for the green color, that is gear ratio eight. Okay. Yep. You can see the simulation simulation stops at uh, around twenty six seconds. Mm -hmm. Because if you see the RPM of the engine is three eight two five. I see. Because now if you go back to again to that plot, uh, this uh, talk and speed curve, mm -hmm. you can see that the maximum velocity is reaching is around 3840. Uh, so, so as we don't have data beyond that, and one more thing is that uh, we know that the Baha engine, the maximum engine RPM is around 3840. Three uh, so that's why the simulation gets stopped. So with that gear ratio, people would run into the over RPMs quite quickly. Right? Yes, I see. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes, yes. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, then the, the next thing what we have... Probably uh, the other one is reducing the RPMs um, yes. too much, the gear ratio yes. of two. I see. Yeah, yeah, and then the four is working fine for us. We are mm -hmm. that, that is giving us the results. Nice. So, so we have the simple gear ratios four. Perfect. Okay. So, can we have a quick look at the torque curves? How they the, how they are different? Yeah, sure. So here you can see that mm -hmm. for the green already the simulation stopped, yeah. and uh, for the for the gear ratio two, we don't have enough torque to accelerate the vehicle. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Oh, the, the the this dashboard thing and the opportunity to run parameter studies that that's a pretty pretty interesting approach. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, then further, we have the vehicle body, mm -hmm. uh, wherein you can we have this vehicle body block where you can specify your car mass, yep. the number of wheels per axle, and different other parameters. And even if you want, you can also include the drag. I see. Mm -hmm. So we're I, I'd be interested about the tire modeling because. Bacha is happening in quite rough condition. It's all terrain. Mm -hmm. So what, what mm -hmm. approach did you follow for the, for the wheels and tires? So here what we have done is we have just taken the default values in the block. Yeah. Okay. So because we are giving you a, a simpler model. Mm -hmm. So if you have the data for your tire, you can, you can feed in the data and try on your vehicle. Okay. Yeah. So we went simple. Um, because the focus here is continuous variable transmission, so tire very yeah. simple. If you want to to go into the details of that, we actually have a racing lounge episode um, that is called tire modeling. Um, mm -hmm. This is something where you can really dig into the details. But I, I totally that makes totally sense, and we are um, keep it simple for here yeah. um, for all the parameter yeah. studies we we want to do. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have used a simulation data inspector mm -hmm. uh, to compare the. Uh, vehicle speed at different uh, masses. So data inspector is a tool where you can run multiple simulations, right? Yes, how, yes, how, how, multiple how simulations. Do, how would, uh, how would uh, people enter it? So we, we, you, need, uh, you need to log the signals mm -hmm. for that. Okay. You need to log, like, if you want to measure the velocity, so if you, if you can see in the model, mm -hmm. so I have logged the signal over here. Ah, I see, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that even though the uh, velocities of vehicle with different masses, they are at the same means they are attaining the same maximum velocity, mm -hmm. but uh, initially uh, uh, the velocity of the uh, vehicle which is having the least mass that mm -hmm. is m is equal to 100 kg is yeah. higher than compared to the 250 kg vehicle. That makes sense. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. And this is probably a good tool um, to investigate a few of the major parameters like how to tune the engine, what yeah. weight of the car we repeat teams should have and stuff. So that, 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 that's actually pretty helpful. Yeah, yeah, cool. sure. Then the second thing what we have done is we have studied the behavior of the uh, primary RPM and the secondary mm -hmm. RPM and the vehicle velocity by changing the CVT ratio. Mm -hmm. So as you can see over here, that uh, when the CVT uh, when the CVT ratio is less than one, that is uh, before 26 mm -hmm. seconds, the RPM of the primary is greater than the secondary. Mm -hmm. And once it crosses that, means when it is less than one, the secondary RPM is uh, more than the primary, and the same thing goes when it is more than means uh, after that that, that is 52.4 seconds. When it is higher than one, the second uh, the Primary RPM is greater than the secondary mm. RPM. So where where is that um, behavior coming from? Did we did we specify it, or is it is it a realistic physical behavior? So we can't say. I mean, the uh, we we are just giving some random mm -hmm. CVT ratio so, over here, and changing means checking how the RPM values are changing. Okay, and this is something that yeah. that teams also could could specify on their own, assuming they they yeah. would have test data. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, if they have tested that. And one thing, what team uh, the, the team know the teams know is that they know they know the range. They do uh, they know that the range is zero point four three to three. So they can they yeah, can try and this is where that. you can get started right away. Cool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there is one more thing, what uh, which uh, means where I will like to bring the note mm -hmm. notice that is, you can see that the uh, variation, uh, the nature of the curve of the vehicle velocity, right. and the CVT uh, uh, the secondary pulley is uh, almost the same right reason being that the secondary pulley is connected to yeah. the, the to the rear okay yeah nice validation yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah so just now we saw the effect of changing the vehicle weight and the cvt and the cvt ratio yeah just as two examples right you want one could basically yeah. do parameter variations on different different variables yeah so, yeah so, yep so as of now we have seen that uh, we are giving some random values of uh, 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 to the cvt ratio mm -hmm. and we are checking the vehicle performance now this is not realistic because the CVT ratio is depending on the vehicle velocity. Mm -hmm. So that's why there is one more model that is closed loop model which has been built using uh, lookup table. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and see what uh, what does that mean and how we have done that. So we have written a script of, uh, where we are using the previous open loop model mm -hmm. and we are we are uh, we have logged the data the CVT ratio and the vehicle speed mm -hmm. and then and you can see that uh, it is giving this relation between the CVT mm -hmm. ratio and the vehicle speed. So this data we are using for the lookup table. Right. So what we are doing is okay. Let's let's go to the model. Mm -hmm. So as you can see that uh, we have removed that uh, CVT signal builder over here, mm -hmm. and there's a feedback coming from the velocity to the Makes CVT sense. block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you go inside the CVT, right. this is the lookup table. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So based on uh, the data given to the uh, lookup mm -hmm. table, it is calculating the required amount of CVT mm -hmm. ratio. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now let's do one thing and see means how it is helpful, how this model is helpful to get the CVT ratio. Mm -hmm. now if you run the model and if you change this one, you can see the velocity is varying. Mm -hmm. okay. And let's stop the simulation. Right, so I'm seeing that the throttle has a base rate of 0.3, and when you move the knob, basically the speed is increasing, increasing a bit. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. this is also and where teams probably could insert all of their commands that they want to try, like acceleration, braking, and some maneuvers they yeah. want to test. Yeah, okay. exactly. Cool. They can try. That's it. cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and similarly in the CVT ratio, you can see how the CVT ratio is changing. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. So here you can find the change in CVT ratio. Okay, perfect. Yep, it looks like being pretty, pretty helpful to to Bacha teams, right? Yep.
So we have shown all the models, what, what we have created, and let's go to the key, key takeaways. So first thing what you can do is you can use SimScape and SimScape driveline to model longitudinal vehicle dynamics. Right. And uh, then you can incorporate real component data. The model which we showed is quite simpler. We have mm -hmm. made a simple model like we, we spoke about the tire. So if you have the data, you can try your own model with different data. Mm -hmm. And then you can use simulation to explore and analyze various designs and parameters exactly. yeah. at the same time. Yeah. I, I would add one takeaway or one comment is like, always be aware that, that we, we, or you will be model, modeling a simplified version of reality. So especially the tires, yeah. uh, some other things. So if you want to invest a bit more of time in a bit more of testing, you certainly can mm -hmm. do, um, but also take yeah. into account that simple models may also deviate from real, real world conditions. Um, but yeah. I would say that, that that's really a good, good, perfect starting point um, for, for you guys, yeah. for Bacha teams to, to, to model the vehicles. That's awesome. Yeah. So you can follow the procedure mm -hmm. and have your own data and try the model and build the model for your own vehicle. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you very much, Beer. Yeah. Yeah. Last good. but not least, um, find attached a summary of our Racing Lounge resources. We are a team of, of enthusiastic people, so please write us an email if you like, like our videos or give us feedback if we can improve. Please also make sure that you join our Facebook group because, well, everything we do will be posted there. So that's a nice, nice method to stay up to date. And, well, every other thing, like find it on the Racing Lounge, find our software offer on your competition page. And also check out our Racing Lounge blog regularly because we'll cover topics that are hopefully very important and relevant to your work. Thanks very much and yeah. see you next time. Yeah, thanks.